This was the year that open ear buds hit the mainstream. And there are so many that it's getting hard to choose one. So here's a roundup of the top 10 buds. Namaste, we are DHRME. Dudes having really mad orgasms. That's us. So guys, this is gonna be a long video, so feel free to jump around using the chapters down below. But we'll count down to our favorites, so make sure you stay tuned to the end. We're starting briefly with the Clear Arc 2 Sport. This sequel's not just a refresh, but an upgrade on many fronts. Multipoint support, check. Snapdragon sound, double check. And let's cut to the chase. These are the clearest in terms of sound. They sound good no matter the codec. They're very near the loudest of the bunch too, which is a big deal for open ear buds because your music is often competing with the world's noise. Battery life is eight hours on paper and eight and a half hours from our DHRME test drive. Check out these mic samples for a taste of the clear experience in the wild. Pop, pop, popsicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. But every silver lining's got a red ball, right? We wouldn't really bother with these buds for calls in noisy or windy situations. For the fuck man, you've got answer hang up and volume control right at your fingertips. Clear's been splurging on features that seem more like party tricks than essentials. UV sterilization in the case, head motion control, and a step counter in your buds? Feels like Clear stepping into territory best left to smartwatches and phones. Wireless charging and smart pause are still MIA. Comfort-wise, the new rubberized ear hooks are more stubborn than flexible, leaving us longing for the original Arcs fit. Now let's get real about quality control. Multipoint through a few too many tantrums. The bud sometimes play hide and seek with the connection, and we've had moments where only one bud seemed to wake up and play. It's like they've got a mind of their own. Do we give the Clear Arc 2 Sport a thumbs up? Hang tight. We'll drop our final verdict at the end. For now, let's move on to the One Audio Open Rock S, a budget friendly option coming in at $90. Pros include a commendable battery life claiming 19 hours, but delivering a respectable 12 and a half hours in real world testing. Plus with an IPX5 rating, they're resistant to sweat and rain, making them a solid choice for the more active user. And when it comes to call quality, pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, ice cool, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Man, these held their own in noisy conditions, barely hearing the cars. The wind is tricky, but in a light breeze, these are great. Overall, a go for phone calls, guys, albeit without mute or volume controls. However, every rose has a red ball. The case is about as thick as the Z Fold 5 we have here, just a bit shorter. The overall feel is a bit on the cheaper side, and those thicker ear hooks don't play nice with eyewear or give you a consistent sound experience. It's got very limited controls, and sound wise, they're such a step down from the Open Rock Pro, which we'll cover later in this video. These sound very shouty and just cheap. The One More Fit SE is priced attractively at $70, a solid 11 hours and 45 minutes of battery life and an IPX5 rating are great. And comfort, One More Fit SE nails it, especially for those who wear glasses. Thinner ear hooks compete less for the space above your ears with glasses. There's a basic control scheme and app support to tweak it some more. And the mics, well, pop, pop, popsicle. Ice, ice, ice to go. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. Noise is great, but the wind, not so much. And so we go to the cons. No volume or mute controls on calls. No multipoint or wireless charging. The sound profile is very trebly and lacks bass definition and punch. That front heavy design makes it that the sound isn't very consistent since the distance and position relative to the ear is liable to change. I had to EQ these buds so extremely it felt like I was 18 again with all my high frequency hearing restored. <laughs> The good old days. The One More Fit S50 comes in at $150. To start off with, these have an interesting design choice for tips, ear tips. Well, more like feet, ear feet. They don't enter your ear canal, but just rest on the concha. And these tips lead to what might be the most consistent sound in the open ear league. Less variation in distance from ear holes and more precision. Available in gray and silver, the S50 or the One More Fit doesn't shy away from making a statement. Inside the box, you get four sizes of those tips we talked about and a carrying pouch. Battery life, advertised at 11 hours, but in our DHRME test, it chugged along to an almost impressive 14 hours. And guess what? Wireless charging is on board, and it's the only one on this list to support it. Plus, with an IPX7 rating, these buds are ready to take on a splash or three. 
One standout feature is the wear sensor, also unique for this list. And what about the microphones? Pop, 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 it goes. Ice, 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 it goes. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. My voice was quite audible even with cars whooshing by, but the voice sounded a bit processed and not very sharp. But wow, in the wind, you could hear me clearly when I was speaking loudly. It was only a problem when I started to speak softly. And there is no mute from the buds, but there is volume control. Don't you feel like a powerful fuck, man? But with great power comes great responsibility. And that's where we segue into the cons. And when it comes to volume, these buds don't just speak, they shout, being the loudest on our list, even at the lowest volume level. It was too loud for me in a quiet room. Despite their volume prowess, these buds might feel a bit too touchy for those used to true open ear designs, leaning more towards a hybrid feel. The feet on the concha don't give you that fully open ear experience. Touch controls are there, but with just double taps and triple taps. Lucky there is customization in the app and we've customized them for play, pause and volume. Speaking of the app, it's decent. Good for former updates, touch customization and preset EQs, but not much else. And the so-called multi-point feature, let's just say it's a bit of a tease, not quite living up to its name. If you try to pair a second device, then it will forget the first. So it looks like one more is resetting the buds when you put them into pairing mode. Now, about the sound. Tested with AAC on the Fold 5, the S50s share a family trait with the One More Fit SE. Low on the bass, high on uh, highs, you really need to snuggle these buds close for the full effect. They're brighter than the SE and bass lovers might feel left out in the cold. Busy tracks can feel crowded and while the mids are commendable, probably the best on this list, the high sometimes drop the ball, lacking that crisp premium feel as opposed to its competitor. Soundcore has entered the chat with open ears and now you know it's getting serious. Their cheaper offering, the Aerofit, is priced at a cool $130. The Aerofit boasts an IPX7 rating and while they claim a battery life of 11 hours, our DH Army test resulted in 13 hours. And for those who appreciate thoughtful design, the colorblind friendly battery indicator with its three LEDs is a neat touch. And even though this is the non-flagship offering, there is even support for multipoint. And the app gives you some EQ settings, controls customized and a device list for the multi-point along with a few smaller settings. It's a very pocketable case as far as open ear cases go and it's high on comfort with ear hooks that bring to mind the Shox open fit though not quite as light and flexible as the Shox offering. Now let's eavesdrop on the mic quality. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. And the verdict on calls? Well, for outdoor noisy situations, they're just okay, nothing special. The voice sounded a bit muffled and you do hear cars driving by quite clearly. And don't bother in the wind, there's just too much interference. Oh, and dear Fuckman, keep in mind, while you can control volume for music, you can't do that on a phone call, nor can you mute directly from the buds. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. The Aerofit comes only in black, though whispers of other colors are on the horizon. The case, while slim, feels a bit like a budget movie prop, plasticky and a touch too light. Control-wise, you're getting just single double taps and a long press. We've set ours to juggle play, pause, volume and track control, plus a quick summoning of the voice assistant. The buds are light, but you can't fix them in place, unlike the open rocks. And unfortunately, there's no wireless charging or a wear sensor. Maybe they should release a pro version? Hmm, keep watching the rest of this video. Now, let's talk sound. Tested over AAC on the Fold 5, Aerofit pumps more bass than the one more lineup. But the trouble, it's there, but spiky and thin like a needle in a haystack. Hard to enjoy and easy to criticize. The mid bass is prominent, but if we're talking overall balance, the Open Rock Pro has it beat. Aerofit's treble lacks refinement, often sounding a bit on the thinner side. It's no pro, for sure. Unlike the Ola Dance OWS Pro, it's like the trying to outshine Apple with a $230 price tag. First off, let's talk design. It's pretty sleek with a ceramic shiny finish and comes in five colors. It's got that premium vibe all over it and thankfully you can pair these with your favorite sunglasses and still be comfortable. They've even included multi-point support with the device list in the app. Only thing keeping it from perfection? 
no pulling connection from a previously paired device. But here's where it gets interesting. The pressure sensitive squeeze buttons on these buds are customizable. And there's volume control too, which you can adjust by stroking those buttons. It's not only the price that was inspired by Apple, you see, but let's be real. If you're mid run or working out, the last thing you want is to fiddle with a gentle swipe for volume. Thankfully, you can tweak this in the app to switch from stroke to squeeze control. Battery wise, the case sports four LEDs to tell you how much is left in the case. Thank you, Ola Dance, on behalf of all colorblind people everywhere. Battery claims are 16 hours on the buds and 58 hours including the case. We put them through the DHRME test and got a neat 16.5 hours. Here are some mic samples for you to pop, ice, and test. Pop, 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 ice, 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 go. Test, 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 thing. One, two, three. So, how do they fare for calls? It did fine when it was quiet, but terrible when Rowan was speaking at a normal volume and when cars were going by. We would not pick this, that's for sure. In the wind, they struggle too. So overall, not a great pair in the microphone department. They're decent for the Fakman though. You've got volume controls right on the buds, but no mute function. So begin the downsides. They're IPX4 rated, which is fine. The case is bulky, and while you can shut the buds down via the app, you need the case to turn them back on. This might be handy if you want to leave the house without that bulky case. We don't blame you. We also notice some weird interference or crackling noise when there's no audio playing. The app, it's a bit hit and miss, often struggling to connect. There's also a focus mode that's a unique feature for these buds that you can turn on in the app. It supposedly tries to mimic, get this, noise cancelling with open earbuds. It works for like 20% but mostly gives us the feeling of having clogged ears. You know that pressure in your ears when you're on an airplane and there is no wireless charging or wear sensor on board. And the sound? We tested these on the Fold 5 with the AAC codec. The mids are impressive but the bass feels off. It's like the buds are rattling yet the actual bass reproduction isn't quite there. The treble is decent but it's a bit too grating or sibilant for our liking. Let's dance right on to... The Ola Dance Open Wearable Stereo Generation 2. It's got some neat updates and we're thrilled to see multipoint support making its way back into more products. Plus, the app now features a device list where you can easily manage your connections, an 8-band EQ and 19 hours of advertised battery life. But guess what? Our rigorous DHRME battery test squeezed out a solid 20 hours. And wingtips are included to keep these buds a bit more stable. Now, keeping in line with what we loved about the first gen Ola Dance, this version maintains a slick design with multiple color options. They're so comfy and light you'll forget they're there. The controls, still intuitive and easy, with volume control included. And pairing new devices is a breeze, just hold down both buds for two seconds. But let's switch gears to mic quality. Check out these samples to get an idea of how they fare in calls. Pop, 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 control. Ice, ice, ice. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. The Oladance 2 does okay in noisy conditions, not spectacular. You hear the cars and the voice gets distorted from time to time. Okay in a pinch though, but don't bother in the wind, you just won't hear the person talking. However, the on bud volume controls are a neat feature. But let's talk red balls. These buds have some of the lowest peak volume of all the buds on this list, one of the quietest in this category. Plus, they're IPX4 rated, which is fine in daily use, but not as high as most of the buds on this list. This is the only charging case on this list, which while sizable and prone to smudges, especially the darker version, doesn't house a battery. So it's just for charging with a Type-C cable and it passes the charging through to the buds. And there is no wireless charging here. Ola Dance does offer a separate charging case, but why not include it as standard at this point? And remember, no wear sensor means no smart pause. Plus, you'll need the case to power them back on if you switch them off using the app. Lastly, why the need for an account just to use the app Ola Dance? We get it, data is king, but still. And what about sound? The Oladance has a brighter house sound with more sparkle, but the bass is on the quieter side. Voices and lead instruments are going to stand out more with these. However, it sounds a bit less natural in the higher frequencies. Bass is quite anemic, you can just barely hear it. What was amazing a couple of years ago is just good now. Wow, this market changes quickly, shockingly so. You've probably heard about those bone conduction models like the Open Run and Open Run Pro, right? Well, Shox's Open Fit joins the gang with air conduction or open ear style buds. 
First up, these buds are so comfy, you'll forget they're even hugging your ears. We're not kidding. Tipping the scales at a feather light, 8.3 grams per bud, they're the lightest in our lineup. Perfectly snug for all your athletic shenanigans and guess what? These little guys are not just about resisting sweat, they're dust fighters too, boasting an IP54 rating. Let's chat about the charging case. When we say portable, we mean it, though we're sticking in those air quotes because it's still bulkier than your average wireless earbuds case. But for open ear ear hook style buds, Shox is onto something here. Now, about the battery, with the lightest buds come some trade-offs. They promise seven hours of juice per charge and 28 with the case. We put these claims through the DHRME endurance run and guess what? A solid seven hours it is. No marketing fluff here. On to the sound check. The bass is there, but don't expect it to blow your socks off, especially compared to the One Audio Open Rock Pro. More on that later. The treble's a bit edgy right out of the box, but there is room to play with five EQ presets and a five band custom EQ in the app. And a big shout out to Shox for adding multi-point post launch, a real game changer. But hold your horses, we are not calling it the ultimate Fuckman's dream just yet. Let's dive into call quality. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Rowan's voice was very clear throughout the test, even when he was speaking softly. You do hear the cars a bit, but it's not disturbing. The windy test is a tricky one. If the wind wasn't too strong, then the open fit did all right. But otherwise, the voice was overpowered. We wouldn't advise it for the wind if that's what you're looking for. And for the fuckman out there, these buds have got your back with controls. Answer hang up and volume, but only if you've done your homework in the app and configured it properly. Now let's peek into the shadows. The app's pretty bare bones. You get an EQ and some control customization, but it's a world of either or. Double tap or tap and hold. You can't juggle play pause, track control, voice assistant and volume all at once. We've set ours for play pause and call handling on double tap with tap and hold for volume. But fair warning, those touch sensors can be a bit finicky. Touch controls, am I right? And there's a bit of delay when you adjust volume, so you kind of end up waiting for a second or two before the volume changes. As for the sound, they're decent for casual tunes and great for this design, but don't expect them to top the charts in driver capability. And there's a couple of things missing from the party. No wear sensor to auto pause your tunes and no fancy wireless charging. You're going old school with the type C port. All right, now we're getting to the real good stuff on this list. All right, the bronze medal goes to, drum roll, the One Audio Open Rock Pro. First gen product, right? But it certainly doesn't feel like it. Comfort, check. Adjustable ear hooks that actually stay put, double check. Because of the twisty and stay in place nature of these ear hooks, these buds sound consistent. The second most consistent on this list. That's because they're always the same distance from your ears, every time. And the buttons, always retro, always reliable. Play pause, call handling, it's all a button away. And that includes volume controls during calls. Battery life is where one audio flexes hard, claiming a marathon 19 hours. We put it to the test and while it's more like a half marathon at 14 hours, it is still pretty impressive. Toss it in the charging case and you're looking at nearly two days of battery life. Now, let's get into the sound of these Open Rock Pros. These are one of the best sounding buds here. The treble is muted, but resolves nicely, and mids sound great and natural. Overall, it's a warmish bass forward sound that might make you question reality. Is that sub bass or just your brain playing tricks? Either way, it rocks hard, especially with some good old rage against the machine. And then the bass, probably the best on this list. And that extra oomph isn't just nice, it's necessary. Because if you're outdoors or just turn on the fan indoors, the bass is gonna take a hit. So no, it's not too much bass, it's just right for real world use. Phone calls on these, here's the lowdown. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing, one, two, three. In the noisy test, you heard more of the cars, but my voice was still audible. It gets a bit annoying when I speak softly though. And in the wind, it was overpowering my voice so much that you could barely hear what I was saying. Now about design, these buds are rocking that retro Wall Street banker vibe, especially the black and gray model. And that silver one is a questionable fashion choice too. But hey, if that's your jam, you do you. The case though, it makes for some awkward pocket scenarios. And getting the buds out of the case, it was a bit of a workout for our fingers. But hey, once we mastered it, it's smooth sailing. Oh, and one audio, why the extra charge for the silicone case? Missed opportunity for some customer love right there. The lack of an app means what you see or hear is what you get. 
No wireless charging, no wear sensor, no multi-point support, no EQ, but hey, nobody's perfect. And while they might not be the loudest in the chorus, they still reach a decent peak volume. What's your peak? I mean, pick, Rohan? Right. The pick for me. We didn't initially have these on our radar, but when you guys asked us to review them, we reached out to Tozo for a review sample and boy are we glad we did because the Tozo Open Buds, they're giving every other set of buds on this list a run for their money. First off, they cheap, $70 and often discounted, these aren't going to hurt your wallet. They probably won't hurt your pocket as well since the case is one of the smallest on this list, volume wise. And while on volume, these buds aren't the loudest on this list, but man, do they sound good. They're fairly bassy and overall relatively balanced. The treble can get a bit shrill, but overall, you know what? One of the nicest sounding buds on this list. You can also tweak the buds with the EQ presets and a custom 10 band EQ in the app. Another reason why these buds sound so good is that the earpiece can move on two axes independent of the ear hook. These are the only ones on this list that have this feature. You can angle them and they click into place and stay at that angle you want. You can also hear those ratchets. This is what they sound like. Invaluable. This gives you the most consistent sound without any additional hardware. It's pretty genius and we're sure this feature will be copied by others in times to come. These do touch controls, but they're touch controls done right. You can single, double, triple, or long press the touch surfaces and you're covered for everything. Media control, volume control, voice assistant, check, check, check. The best part, all of these are fully customizable in the app. And these buds are kind of small, but that battery life isn't. Tozo advertises 12 hours and we got about 13. Not bad at all. The IPX6 is above average and so is the fact that this supports multipoint. I mean, wow. The best part was you don't need to pause on the first device to hit play on the second. At this rate, the only cons could be the mics, right? All right, then here you go. Pop, pop, popsicle. Ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. In noisy conditions, they did admirably. You could hear little background noise and the voice only started to get affected when I spoke softly. And in a light breeze, these are great. Just don't expect much when the wind picks up. What are some of the cons? Controls for the Fuckman are limited to answering and rejecting calls. But the weird thing is that the media gesture for volume controls actually hangs up the call. The volume control for music is limited to phones only. It does not work with laptops or other devices. Strange. And that multi-point while on paper is fantastic. It's a bit less fantastic in daily use. While on a WhatsApp call with Kevin, I was connected to my phone and my MacBook and the laptop kept disconnecting and connecting to the buds, all the while making an annoying beep sound. Annoying enough for me to disconnect entirely from the MacBook. Those nice touch controls, well, the taps are a bit slow to respond, but it isn't very bad. When you change volume, the prompt sound it makes is the same as the prompt when I say, okay, Google, which is confusing. And yes, there are false taps because the single tap is enabled. Oh, and there's a certain amount of shadiness involved. The app itself is available on the stores, but to update firmware, it prompted me to sideload another APK on Android. And that also wasn't exactly straightforward. And you know what, guys, I'm cheap but I'm also a man of taste. And there's nothing that satisfies that intersection set like the Tozo Open Buds on this list. These are the cheapest on this list and by far the best on this list in my view. Thank you guys for suggesting these again. But this isn't your pick, is it Kevin? Did someone say pick? I, I mean pro, because I'm picking the Soundcore AeroFit Pro. Comfort is key for me. And again, these buds have light, shocks open fit style ear hooks. Easier on the ears, especially when you're sporting sunglasses. A peculiar addition is the neckband, seemingly trying to mimic that bone conduction aesthetic. But why Soundcore? Anyway, if you do decide to use it, it's adjustable. A definite step up from those rigid headbands. The case, slim, compact, just slightly smaller than the Olodons Pro, but not quite as small as the Shox open fit. There's an LED strip on the case button for battery status. Now, about controls, they've kept it simple. You get buttons, we are dull of buttons. Single, double press and a long press, which is your power toggle. You can customize these buttons for functions like play pause or volume adjustments, but there's a trade-off. You'll have to give up track skipping ability on one bud. 
It's got multi-point connectivity, handy for juggling between devices. Plus, it supports LDAC for top-notch sound quality. And we just got an update bringing in spatial audio because, you know, spatial audio. Good morning! Sound-wise, expect a bassy profile. The bass is rich, deep, and actually kind of reminds me of older Bluetooth headphones, which is saying something for an open ear design. The timbre is solid, no cheap treble here. Sub bass is there, but doesn't make a strong statement. My take for music, these are up there, possibly one of the best sounding in this style of buzz. What about how your voice sounding? Pop, pop, popsicle. Ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. The Aerofit has almost no issues in noisy conditions. Rowan can be heard clearly and the car sounds are at a minimum. And we saw pretty much the same in a light breeze. All in all, a definite recommend from us. And for the fuckman out there, yes, volume control works during calls. Color options are limited to black at launch, but more are on the way if Soundcore is to be believed. On the durability front, an IPX5 rating, not quite the highest, but adequate. Battery life is advertised as 14 hours for the Buzz, 46 with the case, but in our battery test, it hovered around 10 hours on the Buzz. That's probably because of LDAC, which let's be honest, is overkill for this form factor. The accompanying app is basic yet functional. You've got control customization, EQ settings, firmware updates, and a handy Find My Buds feature. However, this isn't quite pro enough since it misses out on wireless charging and wear sensors. Maybe we need a Pro Max model? You're welcome, Soundcore, not sponsored. <sighs> Speaking of sponsors, these kind of videos take a lot of in-depth testing, scripting, shooting, and editing. And we love doing it without accepting any monetary compensation from any of the brands we review. This keeps our opinion as unbiased as humanly possible. So thanks to you guys for being our supporters as patrons and YouTube members. In exchange, you get our eternal gratitude, exclusive content of high quality audio recordings, low quality microphone recordings, and a shout out in these videos. We're also introducing a new Fuckman tier, and your sweet, sweet names will be read out with our mouths at the end of this video. So go to Patreon and become a patron or hit join on YouTube. You've been considering becoming a Fuckman. And we've been DHRME. Do we? Oh. It's pretty sleek. Oopsie. Rowan's voice was. Rowan's voice was. Is this OWS Pro? I mean, wow, the best part was you don't need to pause on the first device to hit play. The best part was that, I mean, wow, the best part was you don't need to hit pause. I mean, wow, the best part was you don't need to hit. It fell down, that's not good. That's the work, I guess, I hope prompt when I say, okay, Google, which is confusing. Stop. 